stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. You can stand whatever you want to do right now. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel like somebody's just going to keep busting out and worshiping anyway. So, amen. The power of God is here right now. Stir up. Give me about 10 minutes. Stir up comes from the Greek word. And that's a pollo. And it means to rekindle. Inflame one's mind. It means strength or zeal. Rekindle in the English means to cause to begin to burn again or to ignite again. When you first received the gift of the Holy Ghost, you were baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. When you received the Holy Ghost, there was a passion and an ignition that started off inside of you. And you were a worshiper and a prayer warrior and a praiser and you were a fanatic for Jesus Christ. But I want you to know that the devil is out trying to make sure that us Christians end up just going through the motions, making sure that our fire is controlled. He doesn't mind a little fire as long as it's contained in the fire pit or contained in a designated area. He's afraid of fires that get out of control. He doesn't mind you having the Holy Ghost as long as you don't get too crazy with it. He doesn't mind you going to church as long as you don't get too fanatical with your work. He doesn't mind you going to church as long as you don't get too crazy with your faith. He doesn't mind you going to church as long as you just sit there and make it through the service and keep yourself preoccupied with what lunch is going to do or your afternoon plays and go to the altar for a minute or two or skip it all together and leave church without feeling the fire of the Lord. He doesn't mind a church that gathers without feeling the fire of the Lord. He doesn't mind a church that even preaches the truth as long as they keep it to themselves. He doesn't mind a church that is apostolic as long as services are the same every single week with no excitement, no passion, no enthusiasm, and any signs of outward worship or miracle signs and wonders. I'm here today to tell us we need to stir up the Holy Ghost that is within us. If you have the Holy Ghost and you haven't spoken in tongues for a long time, my God, what haven't you spoken in tongues in a long time? If you receive the Holy Ghost, it's your God-given right to lift your hands, open your mouth, and speak in an unknown tongue. Come on. It's your God-given right to begin to stir up that gift that is within you. If you've had the Holy Ghost for 20 years and you haven't spoken in tongues for 15, my God, let's get that gift stirred up. Let's get it rekindled. Let's get that flame burning again. Let's get that excitement burning again. Come on now. If Caleb, at 40 years older, could tear down mountains and strongholds and giants, you can too in your own grave if you would just stir up the gift of God that is inside of you. We need you. We need your older sense. We need you to stir up the gift of God that's in you. We need people like Sister Oliver that's going to bust a move out of the altar and begin to run the aisle. We need somebody that says, my God, he's been too good to me. There are things happening, and I can't help myself but worship. We need to, we need to stir up our worship. Let me just say this. If you don't worship like you did when you first got into church, then you're backsliding. When you first got to church or greater, then you're back. There wasn't mind to come to church if you just worship and do just a little bit here or there. But man, when I first got into church, you couldn't keep me from sitting still. You couldn't stop me from hitting the altar and jumping and shouting and worshiping and running the aisle. I'm coming to tell us when we begin to look back, some of us have been in church. I've been in church over 20 years, it seems like now. Over 20 years. I'm telling you, yes, we get older, and yes, our bones don't move like they used to, and muscles don't move like they used to, and you might pull a hammy trying to run the aisles, and you might pop a hip out of joint trying to do the helicopter or the broken chicken neck or whatever we used to do back in the 90s or the 2000s, but I'm here to tell you, you still can have that same fire and that same passion. Yeah, you may not be able to run the aisles, but my God, I can wave my hand with the best of us. I can clap my hands.
love our worship team. Yes. They worship. I want a praise team that doesn't get this gifted God stirred up within them. I love it when they get up to worship and the keyboard player, they get to dancing around a little bit and the praise singers begin to dance a little bit and the drummer begins to shout a little bit. I'm telling you, if they were up here and they weren't worshiping, they wouldn't be up here. But I thank God that we've got some people in our church that have got the Holy Ghost fire burning inside of them. We need to stir up our ministry because it's easy to get discouraged. In 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verses 1 and 6, you find a story. The Bible says it came to pass that when David and his men were coming to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites invaded the south and Ziklag and slit Ziklag and burned it with fire, taking the women captives, and that with their hands slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. David and his men came to the city. Behold, it was burned with fire. Their wives, their sons, their daughters were taken captives. David and the people that were with them lifted up their voice and wept. They had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive to Hinnom and the Jezreelites and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people stayed of stoning him. Because of the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me just stop here for a moment. David was discouraged. He was doing the will of God, but yet he found his camp trash. The enemy had come in, destroyed the city, burned it with fire, taken the women, the sons and daughters captive. He was in a bad place. He was going to give up. His own men wanted to stone him. His own band of mitzvahs and merry men that pledged their lives to him were turning their backs on David. He felt like a failure. He felt like he let everyone down. He was discouraged. He was depressed. He was distressed, as the Bible says. He was questioning his calling, questioning his ministry, and questioning God. The fire and the passion was going out. The fire was dwindling. It was getting down to just ashes. What once started out as a blazing fire for David was now nothing more than some hot embers. The man who started out killing a giant and was high on emotions was now discouraged. The man who was so confident in God was now distressed. I don't know how much time passed or how long he felt sorry for himself. But in the midst of his discouragement, in the midst of his dilemma, in the midst of his distress, David found some encouragement. He encouraged himself in the Lord. I don't know about the last week and a half or so. I have felt so discouraged. We've had people get baptized. We've had people get the Holy Ghost. Miracles have been done. But yet in my mind and my heart, I felt so discouraged. I felt like everything was unraveling. My son and skin was all jacked up. My health was jacked up. Things were going wrong. Everything, it seemed like the roof leaked and everything was piling.
goes something a little bit like this. A minister once asked an actor why actors portraying fiction can move people more than ministers preaching the truth. How can people get up on stage and people be moved to tears over fictional events? But yet, preachers can't get up behind the pulpit and get people moved about uh, real events, about Jesus Christ and miracles and all the things that he did for us. He said, how is this possible? How can you do this? And this is what the actor, this is a true story. This is what the actor replied back to him. It's, he says, and I quote, because we represent fiction as though it were fact. And ministers represent fact as though it were fiction. Fire, there came a viper out of 
allow in the heat. I'm past 10 minutes, by the way, so give me a little bit more time. And fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Yes. Paul was just gathering some sticks to stir up the fire. He was just going to pay the flame. It was raining and it was cold. And he was just making sure the fire just didn't go out. He was just doing his job. I'm getting some logs. I'm getting this sucker moving. I want to burn it hotter. I want to burn it brighter. I need it bigger. And in the midst of trying to have a bigger and a hotter fire, a viper comes out and latches onto him. Paul should have died, but because he was just stirring up the fire, because he was painting the plate, he just shook off the beast into the fire. When you make up your mind, this is what's beginning to happen to us. When you make up your mind that you are going to stir up the gift in your life, the devil's going to be right there to try to poison your mind, try to kill your life, and try to kill your soul. You don't have to worry about that old serpent, the devil. All you have to do is just shake him back off into the fire that you just stood up. When you got the fire of God burning in your life, nothing will be able. Not even the devil himself can stand before you when you got the fire of God stirred up and burning in your life. And all you gotta do is shake them off. All you gotta do, is shake all you gotta do is wave your hand a little bit, and that serpent falls off.